Okay, everyone, welcome to Courageous Living and Sandra Lee. We are going to doing part three of our series on kind of like now what with the divorce process. Um, Sandra Lee, as I've mentioned before, she is a divorce life coach. She also works with collaborative divorce law attorneys. So she works in that field. She also is a divorce mediator. She is also the founder and president of uh, Emerge Victorious, which I just love that name. So today we're going to talk about rebuilding our life after divorce. And again, that's a lot to kind of chew on, but um, I think it's just really key. We've talked about the emotional aspects, some of the practical tips, building your team, the importance of having a good team around you um, to kind of get you through that process. And so now here you are, you know, the divorce papers have been signed and what does that really look like? And that's really where I think divorce life coaching comes in to kind of help you paint that picture. First, let me say thank you so much, Stephanie, for inviting me on this three-part series because um, first of all, I always enjoy connecting with you and just has so much admiration for you. But I, uh, I think it's so important and I, I love talking about this subject, not because I love divorce, right. but because I want there to be hope and healing. And when we get into life after divorce, it's especially dear to me because I want people to know there's hope and there's a future. Just as God has promised in scripture, women tend to seek help for life after divorce. I have just as many men clients of the going through the divorce and the legal and getting through it and helping with the early stage of co-parenting. But I would say about 85% of my clients life after divorce are women. Um, Rebuilding our life after divorce or life after divorce um, has not been talked about a lot up until about the last seven, eight years. And it's, it's a key to needing some coaching and guidance. I find that we need a vision because a vision is what always pulls us forward whether it be looking for a job, whether it be putting our home back together, whatever, we need to grab that vision because without a vision, we don't have to put, know how to put it together. Um, when I do my trainings or sometimes working with clients right at the beginning, I'll put out some puzzle pieces and I'll say, what are the first things you'll do with this puzzle? And they'll say, well, you, you know, turn all the pieces over and then put your corners together and they'll start giving me different answers. And I said, no, nope, that's still not the first thing. The first thing is you got to look at the box of the finished picture because I've got to see that finished picture so I can get a visual of to know how to put those pieces together. I'm going to read um, a workbook series I do for women rebuilding their life. And one of the openings, so I just would like to read it. My dear friend, we meet here on this journey of living our lives after divorce. Certainly this wasn't a trip any of us planned on taking or a club or a statistic we would have wanted to join. Yet our bags are packed with difficult circumstances and we're each walking at our own pace but we all recognize one another's footprints. This road you're traveling has probably presented many potholes and perhaps there were days that you almost crumbled under the hurt, the disappointment, and the fears. Your life may have seemed like a series of crises strung together and at times you may have doubted if you would ever find your way to a new normal. You may have felt like you were living in the emergency room of life. We have all walked a similar journey. We have cried the tears, sang the song of defeat, and dug deep for strength we didn't even know we had. We experienced the burden of the past, embraced the beauty of the present, and celebrate the excitement of the future. We have held hands with many women like you as they forged new ground and made the ultimate decision to move beyond their divorce and watch them blossom into the amazing women God intended them to be. And 
I share that because that last part's what I wrote to women is because we do recognize your journey and I recognize your journey. Stephanie, you recognize their journey. So, so what does that journey look like? I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you've just finished the divorce. I don't know, as I said earlier, if it's a year down the road, but I know today, I know that today is the day to start this journey. Because for every minute that you stay stuck is another minute you're giving to that divorce. Mm. And we are here for more than our divorce and more to just stop living. Um, and when I mean living, of course we get up, of course we eat, of course we go through our day, but it's how do we do that? Do we get up and make our bed? And actually, um, I'm doing a new book and, and one of the topics titles is make your bed. Mm -hmm. You feel better if you get up and make your bed. If your house is put together, the kids do better and coming up with that routine that you were talking about. So it's um, so important. We're actually filming this during this COVID pandemic time. And you would hear many people on TV speaking about how do we weather this uh, quarantine, the shelter in place. And over and over you hear them say, get a routine, make a plan, keep that routine, get up, get going. So women, that is what I, I hope that you will uh, do. So I'm going to talk about some things in this book that I take on. And one of them is uh, spirituality. As believers, and, but this is to anyone of any faith too, but uh, a lot of time there's a lot of shaming that goes on with divorce. And some of that is self-inflicted shame. And some of it truly is uh, what we feel from others. Remember, this is more about them at that point than you. And don't, don't carry that shame. Jesus would tell you, do not carry that shame. That's not for you. And shame is never productive. It doesn't change people. It just makes us hide and go within. But it's because what did we do wrong? Will God hate us? We must not have been a good enough wife or a good enough this or that. And that is just not true. So there's been a lot of um, real pain when it comes to a person's faith and believing. And so I'd encourage you to really go deeper and not get stuck in that uh, shame. Um, women can be really cruel to one another. And I, I always tell people we, we start that in middle school that back talking gossip, the women can be really cruel. And I um, am sad about that, but you may have to find some, you know, new, newer friends. Uh, you realize you don't fit in the couple's Bible study or the couple's groups and the, and, but you find a place, you still belong, you still matter. Another one is living intentionally. Now, when I'm talking about living intentionally, that is because we could wake up and we can go through our day. But to live intentionally, it means I have a focus. I have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And instead of just existing through the day. So living intentionally is going to show up whether I'm talking about finances, the kids, our health. Do it with intention. Do it with purpose. Um, be an intentional parent. Be an intentional employer. Be an intentional friend. But also be intentional in your life for yourself, your self-care. Living intentionally. Finances. Finances can often be very difficult for women after divorce because they may not have done a lot of the financials in the marriage or they may not have worked, they may have stayed home with the children. Um, so it may be very scary. And I really encourage people to meet with a financial planner, to meet with a CPA, learn about your finances. And that does not mean 
that you have to have even any retirement. That doesn't mean you have to have a lot of money. It means that you have to learn about your money. And I shared last week that I really like Scott and Bethany Palmer, the money couple and what you learn in your emotional relationship with money, but be intentional. Don't just say, I don't have money. I'm just going to let it be what it is. And I, I'm just going to say, I mean, I recognize these footsteps. I used to would write down a budget and I would always have more month left over than I did money. And, mm -hmm. oh, I, I just, I, I didn't have a good relationship with money and it was a lot of fears. And I would say that I, um, really some of my marriage and wanting to be married was to be protected or have help financially. That was really where I'd, I'd put that person. Uh, a friend of mine has a koozie that says, um, don't let a man be your financial plan. Go get some education. Yeah. And if I can say too, I remember Mel Robbins talking um, with people, especially now if they're getting laid off, if you've ever been laid off. And I was not long after my divorce, I went after 18 years of banking, I did get laid off. So it was kind yeah. of like a whammy in a short period of time but I think it's so important too that as much as you know whether you have the money or not is to really look at what your debt is look at what your bills are and as much as it's hard because you don't want to know I have lack of something if you get an understanding of where are you at it's like she says how long does that runway go if you've got child support coming in, you know, and you got money coming in, but how long does that last every single month? And really face that, you know, going into that bank account and looking at what is there, looking at what debt is there. I know because I had that fear too, but I just want to encourage, you know, men and women is really look at that as hard as it may be. It may slap you in the face. It may be a huge reality check is power and the more knowledge you have of your finances and what's coming and going you know that can help give you that power of okay I can do this I may go without you know, not have the nicest car I have a friend who's a single mom two of three and her car is pretty much taped together another one I'm gonna come to is dating um, dating after divorce maybe you haven't been asked out on a date and that feels like, Oh my gosh, I'm not worthy. I'm not valuable. Or, or maybe my spouse's ex is um, dating or even remarried. Um, be careful with dating because we use a date to try to find our value and worth. And I always, I talk about in this book about really understanding your value and worth and before you ever go on a date so that you don't become who they need so that you have a voice that you've put a period at the end of your uh, divorce and that's not something you even talk about they don't have any business hearing about it unless that continues much um, way down the road not meeting the children it's not time for that we sometimes want to hurry up date and even get married so we can feel like we fit back in and if that's a need you have, that's really some work you've still got to do. There are some programs out there that tell women that they should stay single, or women and men, they should stay single a year for over five years of marriage. So I start with saying, I, I don't know your time frame. I, some people are healthy at one year and some people aren't healthy at 10 years. The goal is to be healthy and know how to be a healthy dating. Can I add um, something to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, something I've heard, um, it may have been Dr. Phil. I kind of, there's a couple things I wanted to mention about Dr. Phil is that he also talks about, you know, really kind of in, doing an introspect on yourself and, and taking this time to kind of heal of maybe not just the divorce, but maybe it's triggered other things. So a better version of you shows up when you get ready for that next relationship because you don't want that next person paying the price of what the former spouse did. Unfortunately, I went through two, two divorces because I dated and I remarried too soon because I was so focused on my ex-husband was the problem.
And I truly, I thought it was all him. I really did. But I realized what I looked for and hurry up. And when I married, it was just another version of trying to fix a part of me, which because I wasn't healthy enough, meant that I was choosing partners that were not in healthy spaces either. And I was determined after that second divorce of, I've got to really learn and work on me. Some of the best work I've ever done. Getting a vision for the co-parent relationship. You will be in some relationship with your ex-spouse as long as you have children together. And I've said children do as well as the level of their parents' conflict. It is so important to separate the pain and hurt of the divorce from being that co-parent. And to put down that tug of rope for there to be a winner and a loser is just... Um, thinking through what your role is, what you want to say. And I give a lot of different advice, everything from if it's a conflict, conflict and uh, it's struggle to talk to them, then see if once a month you can put an agenda out there and talk to them. Or ways that you don't have to react even if they're not being the greatest co-parent. I also talk about sometimes you have to be a single parent. There are some people you're just not going to co-parent with. You're just not. And in that case, then you've got to be the best single parent with the other parent being a single parent because you can only control what's in your backyard. Kids need both parents, sometimes even when the other parent's not particularly great, but unless they're abusive, and, and I truly mean abusive, not, right. not um, the people misuse that. They need both parents. And you had children with this parent and they're a part of that kid's life and they don't need to feel that if you dislike that other parent, that somehow you must dislike a part of them. They love their mom, they love their dad in their own unique ways. And the other thing is take the kids out of the middle. Don't ask them questions. Don't ask them to report. Don't ask them to give a bill to the other parent or ask the other parent if they'll change a weekend schedule. The next thing, there's several in here, but one I want to touch on briefly is rebuilding life in the midlife stage. Midlife um, is the fastest growing group going through divorce today. And when we talk about midlife, that's called the gray hair or the gray, not gray hair, gray divorce, mature divorce, midlife divorce. And as a mediator, I can tell you it's they're not even more mature going through a divorce, but you have different fears. And those fears are the kids are grown. What, what do you do? Go back to work late in life. You feel like part of your purpose, let me finish that, part of your purpose is gone when your kids have gone to college or, or gone off in their own nest, or um, you've got to go back to work and there's so many fears later in life with that. Or Who's going to take care of you? as you age or your health care and what is retirement like. And, um, but what I will say is women that are intentional and choose to embrace a future and choose to not allow divorce to take them to the ground of victim, they really, really thrive. They will go back to school they will reinvent themselves and they see a future in front of them, which is different. If a man doesn't remarry quickly, he really sees his life ending. He's at the end of his career. But women, oh, when they learn about money, they will soar because they grab it in a way that um, the men don't. They, uh, you know, today we have more ownership of homes new homes or homes by women and more businesses, new businesses being started by women. We have more graduates from college later in life and entering college that is with women. Today, right now, is the day, my friend. Get up out of those ashes and walk to the promised land and create that promised land. Put one hand in God's and the other one you just keep pushing forward. 
There are going to be mountains. There's going to be valleys. We believe in you. You matter. You're valuable. You're worthy. And go live a big next chapter in your life. Goodbye, my friend. Hey, my friends, I hope you found this video encouraging and helpful for everyday life. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below. Also, don't forget to follow me on my other social media platforms.